Last week, I was just working at my desk when I got a message. We just got a $4,500 AWS bill for just the last two days. That is a message you never want to see. I jumped over to that account, estimated the billing for the next month at $63,000. Nobody wants to be in this situation facing a massive AWS bill. So make sure you stick around to the end of this video as I'm gonna be giving you my top tips for how you can avoid ending up in hot water like I did. In Cost Explorer, there was a massive cost from S3, but also from Lambda. Looking through the list of Lambdas that wrote to S3, I found the culprit. It was a Lambda that was using a thousand concurrent instances running non-stop for the last day and a half. So what was the issue that caused this massive spike in our AWS bill? In our case, it was a Lambda function that was used to generate thumbnails of different products. It was triggered every time we uploaded an image into a certain folder in S3. It then regenerated a smaller thumbnail and uploaded it back into S3. To protect this Lambda from being triggered by its own thumbnail, we'd put in some extra rules to the S3 trigger so that it only triggered with a specific suffix at the end of a image. Unfortunately, there was a small error in our Lambda configuration and that suffix wasn't applied. This meant that every time the Lambda created a thumbnail and wrote it to S3, that S3 image triggered the Lambda again, which meant the Lambda just made another thumbnail of the same thumbnail. Luckily, we caught it after just 36 hours, but we'd already racked up a $4,500 AWS bill in that time. So how did we fix it? Well, it turns out that by the time the management team had noticed the bill, we'd actually already fixed it. Because the thumbnail was changing every single time that the Lambda ran, when the front-end team was hitting our API, they kept getting back different responses for the same request. One of my team looked into it and found that yes, the thumbnails were triggering the Lambda again. So we put a little filter into the top of the Lambda code to say, if this is a thumbnail, then just don't process it. This stopped the recursive calling of the Lambda, which put an end to the spike in our AWS bills. Now that we'd patched the issue, we needed to figure out basically why it had happened in the first place. We started by regenerating the CloudFormation template from our serverless code. And we found that even though we had defined a suffix and a prefix for our S3 trigger event, only one of them was actually passed through and available inside the cloud formation. This meant that with no suffix, the thumbnail was rightly triggering the Lambda function to run and causing this recursion. How did we fix this issue with our generation of cloud formation? Well, it turns out that inside your S3 event trigger, the rules need to have a single parameter inside them, either a suffix or a prefix. So we just rewrote that and now we had a system with two separate rules, one for the prefix and one for the suffix. And when we generate the CloudFormation now, we get our correct rules in our CloudFormation template. So now we've managed to fix that, let's talk about the really important part. How do you stop this happening to you? Now, I can let you into a little trade secret here. There is only one way to guarantee 100% that you never incur a bug that causes an AWS bill spike. That is to not write code. Unfortunately, if you do stop writing code, you might not have a job for very long. If you do plan on keeping your job, then the next best thing is to smash that like button to please our AWS overlords. May the odds be ever in your favor. So although there are no 100% guaranteed ways to ensure you never end up with an AWS bill like I did, there are some things that you can do. Now we can do our best with testing to test both our code as well as the infrastructure, 
but testing infrastructure is notoriously difficult and especially testing something as small and as niche as S3 trigger rules is going to be really difficult. Instead, we can change our approach and our goal is to now minimize the time between a bug making it into our system and us knowing about it. The best way to do that is with AWS billing alerts as you can set this up to monitor all usage on your whole AWS account instead of having to set up alerts for each and every service that you use. You can set these up by saying anytime our daily spend goes above a certain limit, then we want to be notified as soon as that happens. Now, in my case, we actually already had billing alerts set up, but with the clients I'm working with, those notifications went to a middle management group. By the time that they had realized that there was a $4,500 AWS bill alert in their emails, we had found and we had patched that bug. That is why I always advise that some of the senior technical team are also included on these billing alerts so that they are able to act on them as quickly as possible to ensure that whatever is causing that spike in your AWS bill is resolved as quickly as possible. You can even set up a dedicated Slack channel so that you get notified as soon as there is a spike in your AWS bill. So now that we're in the situation where developers are finding out fast that there is a system or a bug that is causing a spike in the AWS bill, we can start to change the narrative. This can be as simple as letting the senior management team know that there is a bug, it's caused a spike in our billing, but we are on it and we are looking to resolve it as quickly as possible. Once you've managed to actually fix the bug, you can now write a follow-up report. This can include what went wrong, how it was fixed, and whether that is a permanent fix or was just a quick fix to stop the AWS bill. If you want to take this one step further, you could also write up how likely you think that this is going to happen again and ways or tools that you can implement to ensure that this doesn't happen again. These are the kind of extra little things that help you become a 10x developer. Now, learning about these kind of mistakes is only part of the journey. If you want to become a truly good serverless developer, then you need to understand different architectures. And this video here is gonna teach you about WebSockets as we design a WhatsApp clone.